Welcome to Data Structures Module 2 session where we will discuss about stack, recursion and queue. Now as per VTU syllabus, now these are the main topics under Module 2. So let me just uh, go to my PPT. Yeah, so we have uh, three topics under module two to be discussed. So we will first concentrate on stack and subsequently recursion and queue. So what are the major topics under each of these? Yeah, let me just show you. So we have stacks in which we will try to study definition of a stack. Then we will also study about the various operations pertaining to stack. For instance, push, pop, display. Now these are some of the operations. We can also have other major operations which are normally uh, you know, defined by some of the authors. But the, the main ones are push and pop. Display is only for checking what is the contents of stack at any point of time. So how do we implement stack? Because stack is a data structure. Now we need to have some way of implementing it. So we can do so by using either arrays or by using I mean static ones or dynamic arrays. So this is another way by which we can do it. We can also use linked list so that you will study later mod in later modules. So we have a uh, lot of applications of stack. In fact, we have some real world applications as well. A lot of problems have been solved and are being solved using stack as a data structure. So what we have here is the infix to postfix conversion. So infix is an expression, type of expression which all of us use in many computer languages like C, C++, A plus B is an infix. A, B plus is a postfix. So when the operator appears after the operand is postfix. So we have some necessity where we, we need to convert this infix to postfix or suffix. And also we need to evaluate these postfix expressions. Now, how do we do it? How stack is helpful in doing this. So that's what we're going to study the algorithm, examples, etc. Later, the second topic is called as a recursion. In fact, stack also requires a recursion, but we will study what is recursion, how to explain recursion, recursion tree, and uh, you know the, the way in which recursion could be implemented internally. And all these can be explained uh, with various problems like factorial, greatest common device, uh, divisor, that is DCD, or uh, Fibonacci sequence, Tower of Hena is a famous problem, Ackermann's function. So these are the, though there are many recursive uh, examples, as I will put it in the exercise uh, part of it. But otherwise, these are the topics which need to be studied along with various examples. Well, the third one is called as queues. So queue is also a data structure, but you know, it's not like stack. It's normal queue like first in first out we say. So this is a common sense and real world kind of thing. But in, in, in terms of computer science, we can solve problems by adopting this data structure called as queue. So how do we represent it? Again, we have arrays, dynamic arrays and linked list. So we will defer linked list discussion later. And apart from the normal queues, we also have what is known as circular queues. Right then, circular queue also can be realized using dynamic arrays. Then double-ended queues called as D queues, priority queues. There is some uh, queue policy which is violated, so some priority is attached. And uh, there's a beautiful problem, very interesting problem which is solved uh, with, with uh, uh, you know, real world kind of thing in mind called as a maze problem, you know? a maze problem. So we will develop 
the solution process for this and I'll, 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 I'm happy to share the code also for you so that you can run this code and see how the maze problem really works. Then instead of just having single queue, we can also have multiple que uh, queues and stacks of course, both. So instead of uh, realizing, let's say a stack is implemented or stored in a you know, fixed array, uh, which is being uh, used as a container to store my objects. Now, this stack or queue, of course. So instead of just having one stack or one queue, I can have multiple stack or multiple queues where a single array can be used. Okay. So in some instances or some scenarios, we may require more than one stack or queue for which this could be useful. So we'll all show programs along with the discussion on these algorithms of stack recursion and queues. So now we'll jump into the real discussion on stack. So you can you can just get ready to understand the the one of the uh, you know very important data structure called as stack. Now, study of stack in data structures is a must. Now, every student, every person involved in computer science or information science field now should know what is a stack, right? What is a stack? Stack is a linear list in which insertion and deletion happens at one end. So we also call this, of course, one end means it's the same end. And it operates on the base of what is known as last in, first out. Last inserted item or last inserted object will be available for extraction first. So that's what it is called as last in first out. Now remember this is a data structure that is we can store our objects within a stack, right? You can insert objects within a stack and uh, the last inserted item only will be available for removal. So that's why it's called LIFO. So this is quite uh, easy to understand if we can uh, make an analogy with, you can see this figure, where we have a set of books which are stacked. We can say that set of books which are stacked. Now I have five books here which are kept one over the other. So the last one, that means the topmost one, see this one, is easily accessible rather than any other book. Though, of course, you can physically pull it out. Now, that's not the point. So what is really important here, I can easily take out the topmost book. So that is what called is last in, first out. So I can take it out, the last insert. Supposing if I want to keep one more book, Okay, I'm just keeping one more book here. So this is the last inserted one, so I can just take it out this. So that's exactly what we have shown here in the this side figure, that's the left hand side figure, this one, where this you can see this is the stack. You know, the items are stacked. So each uh, rectangular cell here may contain some object, maybe integer, maybe real, maybe a student uh, record, or it is an employee record, whatever it is. So this, these objects are kept one over the other and uh, we can insert any item to the topmost one rather than inserting in the middle or anywhere inside. So that's that operation we call it as push. <coughs> and similarly, the last inserted item is available for removal. Removal here we call it as pop. So these are the two basic operations called as push and pop. Push is nothing a data item which is placed at the location pointed by the stack pointer. Now in order, what is the stack pointer? Now in order to keep track of both the item to be inserted and the item to be removed, which we call it as push and pop, has to be done by, you know, or by maintaining a stack pointer. 
So what happens? For example, assume that stack pointer points to the topmost element or top, topmost object. <clears throat> now I can insert, I mean push an element or object pointed by this. So I just increment this or I just make sure that this pointer points to the object which is kept as newly and the pointer is adjusted or updated so that now it points to the topmost one. So which means that we require a pointer. Similarly for pop, I can just use this pointer, you know, stack pointer in order to know, okay, this is the last or the last inserted item or the topmost item in the stack. So we need just one pointer called a stack pointer in order because in order to make push or pop. Why? Because both push and pop at the same end. It's not like top and bottom. See bottom I don't need, need to bother because either push operation or pop operation both are done from the same end. So I just need one pointer at the top of the a pointer which points to the topmost element. So push is an operation which inserts a new object into the stack. Pop is another stack operation which actually removes an object from the stack provided you should have enough space in the stack for push. You should have some items in the stack to pop. So these are some of the conditions which we need to check before we perform these operations. So now we will try to understand this with some uh, specific uh, scenarios, specific data in mind. Well, before that, let me just show you uh, what is known as an abstract data type. So this I think you should have already studied where we try to specify what are the various data items which need to be stored, what are the various operations which we can define and relevant for this particular data structure and any exceptions, which means any error conditions which would happen. As I said, Supposing assume that I can store only 10 items in a stack and if you are trying to push 11th item, then it should give me an error. Similarly, if I try to pop an element when no elements are there in the stack, then again it should give me an error. So these are some of the error conditions or the exceptions which need to be checked before any stack operation is carried out. So abstract data type will define that data and operations and of course exceptions. So what are the various types of data elements which we need? Of course we need a container in order to store these data. So I can have a fixed size array or I can have a dynamic array or I can have a linked kind of arrangement as we have seen in strings. So the storage could be in any format but let me just show you in the next slide onwards, maybe only the fixed size array, and then we'll move on to the dynamic one. Link list, of course, it is done in a different module, right? So what are the various operations which we can define? We have to push an object. So that's one of the very important operation. So that's called as pushing an So What object has to be pushed? So that is sent a parameter. It could be an integer or it could be a real element, or it could be any other user defined object. Similarly, pop is another uh, operation where <clears throat> we can retrieve any element or remove an element from the stack. So it returns an object which is taken away from the stack. And top is a pointer which maintains, you know, where my last, you know, last inserted item is there in the stack. Indexing is used for that purpose because we are using an array, fixed size array, so indexing is enough. So there are other operations like, you know, here we can define a stop which returns last inserted element without removing it. This actually removes. And uh, size, how many elements are there, how many objects are there. And is empty, is full, you can also write is full. It checks whether the stack is empty, that means no elements are there in the stack is full, it will check whether the stack is full already or not. So these are some of the, you know, uh, uh, operations which we can define for the stack. Some people, you know, some authors also uh, add peep. So you can just peep through the stack. 
some point of uh, you know at some location what is the data available on let's not worry about all that i think for your standard we can just worry about how to store stack elements using an array of course there is a container what are the operations basically two operations push and pop you can also have display of course now how to understand the entire stack push operation that means how do i push it's very simple so the sequence of operations are shown here along with the pointer details so the first and foremost thing is that the container used for storing the stack data is nothing but an array so we shall assume that there are five you know locations reserved for that means array size for my stack so i have just shown here at the figure in terms of vertical one so it looks like a stack uh, basically array we will show like this you know we will show like this this is the array element so 0 1 2 3 you know all that so that is the same thing actually i have just uh, tilted this uh, 90 degrees so that it looks like a stack initially the stack pointer will point to minus 1 because we have to start pushing the element or object into the stack from zero so if top is made to point to minus 1 we can increment first and then push it because the top or the stack pointer always points to the filled element remember this okay the design could be slightly different but generally speaking we always make sure that our stack pointer or top points to the filled element so in which case i cannot simply add an element or push an element pointed by top so i should push an element to a vacant position for which i need to increment top and then push it okay so that's why it's minus 1 because my first element will go to zeroth one so what i do i increment so from minus 1 it will happen zero right so then i can push you can see here after pushing element 10 assuming that my object here is a simple integer called 10 okay now stack is pointing to a filled element it is the topmost one so i can easily retrieve also or pop also i'll show you the pop in the next slide because we want to just show only the push operations so what happens is supposing if i want to push one more element called 20 then i can increment top similar to what i did earlier so increment top means what it will become 1 because top is pointing to 0 now it will become 1 and you can push it so now 20 goes to the first location and top is pointing to the topmost element which is a filled element now if i want to insert one more or push one more uh, element 30 do so by incrementing top first so from 1 it will become 2 now you can see 30 has gone to the top most one and similarly i can keep on pushing 40 then 50 so now top points to the top most one 50 because remember every time before i do this operation i have to confirm whether i have some space in stack which i have not shown here we'll come to that exception later so because visually i am able to see that there is some space but programmatically or algorithmically i should check see otherwise blindly you can't simply increment top and then push it because supposing i assume that i have only five locations here and i cannot increment here top and push it because i don't have space so every time i need to check Uh, whether the stack has enough space for my element to be pushed so this is only this this figure shows only a simple push operation in a stack assuming that you have space next pop so assume that some scenario is like this the starting point or the initial condition of a stack that means stack contains three elements right so when i say pop it will pop the topmost element in the stack in which case it is 30 so 
After removing this element 30, my top cannot point to this. Top actually should come back to the next topmost element, which is 20. You can see here after popping 30, the, the condition or the scenario of the stack is this because 30 is gone. Actually, it was here, 30 was here. Now it no longer you know, points to this, though it may have some value, uh, but all stack operations are based upon top. So I'm not worried about, I, I don't have mechanism to access other locations, right? So obviously every stack object is accessed through top only. So if I want to pop once again, yes, it's possible because top is still pointing to your field element and hence again, remember, before I pop, I should check whether I have enough elements in the stack so that I can take it out. OK, so that checking has to be done. Right now, top. Now it's pointing here when once if I op, uh, you know execute top, uh, sorry, pop operation, then 20 will go. My top again will be decremented and it will come to. 10, it will point to 10. You can see here that's after popping 20. Now, supposing if I pop this again, top will become minus one because I'm decrementing zero. Zero minus one is minus one. You can see here top is minus one and uh, stack is empty. Now the stack is empty. So don't confuse with empty and one more exception called as underflow. I'll come to that later. So to summarize, Stack elements are popped based upon top. So starting from this, after popping 30, top has to be decremented so that it fill, I mean, it points to the next element in the stack, topmost. And pop after popping 20, it points to 10. And after popping 10, it points to minus one, which means that the stack is empty. So successfully we have removed 30, 20, and 10. So we have added through push, we have removed through pop, these uh, you know stack contents it's fantastic but but there are some exceptions i have already told so now we will talk about the error conditions so supposing assume that my stack size maximum stack size is five right this is a five now and in this scenario Assume that I am executing the function called as push, say 60, element 60. Now it should not allow me. So I should check whether the stack has enough space. Now when I see this stack doesn't have any space, so I immediately flag an error called as stack overflow because there is no space. Similarly, when stack, say this is the last element in the stack, I have executed pop, right? Then top is pointing to minus one and assume that I'm trying to execute again pop when top is minus one. Obviously there are no elements in the stack, so it should give me an error saying that stack underflow. So stack underflow happens when there are no elements or objects in the stack. So this is the most important one where we have the stack exceptions called as overflow, which happens during push, underflow, which happens during pop. Remember this. So this happens during push or it has to be checked during push and underflow has to be checked during pop operation. Next, we will go for the algorithm. So how do we build the algorithm here? Let me just take the same uh, figure like this, you know, push operation. Now stack is a container, so I just define say for instance S or STK or stack whatever it is as an array of some maximum size. So in this case five, so I can just say some maximum size. So this is my stack size, it could be five. So you can't add or push any elements beyond five. So uh, how do I, 
you know, uh, put my statements. It's very simple. Top is initialized to minus one. That is taken care. And my maximum size is five. So check I'm doing. So I should check whether it is an overflow or not. That means whether I have enough space or not. Then I can keep doing it. So what happens? When does this overflow occurs? For example, when top equals max minus one. Supposing max is five, minus one is four. So when, because remember C array start from zero. So that's why max minus one, okay? Because it starts from zero. Otherwise you could make it as max only. If we are talking about array starting from one, you can simply say top equal to max. So, but in this case, it is zero starting and hence it is maximum. So when the top becomes four, which is max minus one, we cannot add any more. Simply say that you don't have space. That is stack overflow can, uh, you know, error. Else, that means you have space. For example, when top is minus one, it's not equal to max minus one, obviously. So the condition is false. So as long as it is, you know, within the a space accommodate. I mean, the element could be accommodatable within the stack. Then there is no problem. <clears throat> so only when top equals max minus one, you have a problem which is max. I mean, overflow. Right. So after checking that, what we should do? We should increment top. So that's the first operation in my algorithm. It should happen because before pushing any element, I should increment top and then push it. So I've incremented and then push. So what is increment top equal to top plus one? So I can simply say top equals top plus one. Next, I should push an element. So assuming S is this pointed by top, you know, because an array, everything is based upon top. So S of top, you can push your element. Assume A is your element to be pushed, which is sent as a parameter to your push function or any object. So now element is pushed to stack pointed by top, you can see. Because now top is zero, so my element, supposing if it is uh, say one, one is the element, which will, or 10 in this case, sorry. Okay, well, we'll take 10 only. So 10 will be pushed here. Next, what happens again when you call push? Same thing happens. First, it is checked. It's a, it has space. So now increment top. So it will become one and push the element, which is in this case 20. And what is the top pointing to one? So 20 goes to this. Place. So it's very simple. Only two statements are required. Increment top and then push the element. So I'll go to the yeah, you can see here if top is n minus one, where n is the you know size of the stack. That means how many elements you are allocating. Yes, you have this. You write stack overflow. Now else, that means you have space. Increment top and push the element. Now e is the element to be pushed, pointed by top. Very very simple. So. Stack pushes over. Now let me go for pop. So how to build the algorithm for pop? So we will just use this diagram, which we have already studied in order to explain the algorithmic statements. OK, now I've told you that before popping, you should check whether there is some element in the stack. At least one element should be there. Otherwise, what is the use? You know, it's, it's actually underflow. OK, so when does the situation arise? When top is minus one, we know that there are no elements. See, when top is not equal to minus one, that means it's pointing to some element. So this ca knowledge can be used in order to check whether there are elements inside the stack or not. So if top equal to minus one, print underflow. Else, you can pop it. So how to how to pop? It's again very simple. That that you should first extract the element pointed by top, correct? So assume that I want to save this element. 
you should extract the element. See, yes, pointed by top. Pointed by top, retrieve that element and store it in T. Right? Right. Okay. Now, we should also update top pointer because top cannot point to this. This fellow is already available to T. That means temporary variable. Now, what should I do? I should update. Update means decrement top. You can see here from 2 it has come to 1, which means top equals top minus 1. So that is your updated value. Done. Now we have to return because in the ADT we have seen that removed element or popped element should be sent back to the calling function. So return T. So you can see, oh, I mean write this return T. So this is a popped element. So 30 will be returned back. So that's exactly what we will show in the pop. So you can see here that I have the, I have, I'll just pick the highlighter here. Yeah. So if top equal to minus one, return minus one. That means you can print or you can return anything. You can do it is the underflow, right? Because generally what happens, pop is designed in such a way that it returns some value. So let us assume that we have all positive elements in, in, in my stack and uh, I can just return only negative elements. So when I return minus one, it is not a regular object. So I can say that it is an underflow case. I can print underflow message in my main function. Now, supposing if top is not equal to minus one, then you can pop. As I said, you know, we can retrieve the element or take out the element pointed by top, store it in a temporary variable, decrement top and return this step, which is a positive element. So we assume that the stack now contains all positive elements and minus one will not clash with any items being stored in the stack and hence minus one signifies that it is a, an underflow. We can handle this in a different way like this, right? Now some students argue, some uh, listeners or viewers argue that what will happen if I store both positive and negative elements in my stack. So this algorithm is a waste. So this algorithm is not a waste. It is an algorithm with an assumption that I've already told that all elements are assumed to be positive. So for the people who argue on this, okay, now this could be used. So this I have given as a C language uh, program, uh, you know, a C function where the pop is redesigned as like, you know, the items is nothing but stack. There's a stack pointer, etc. I think this uh, you'll be studying in laboratory kind of thing. Uh, this is only for the people who have this argument. Um, so others, you know, can skip this slide and my lecture as well. So what I've done here is that I've used a, a pointer here, you know, character pointer in order to make sure that uh, I'm just combining the character and uh, the uh, integer items being stored. So what happens here is that when top equal to minus one, you can see here, I'm trying to return a pointer, void pointer. You can see that temporary variable is declared as a void pointer. Why it's a void pointer? Because I can use uh, integer items for returning and also for a character pointer for underflow case because I have just used this character a literal value like u. So I can just play around uh, uh, with this white pointer, either integer or a character. So that can be used here, like I can take the address of this and store it in this and return the temp whenever there is an underflow 
that means u will be returned as a character pointer. But otherwise, I can just get the temporary variable, which is my temporary one, which could act now as an integer and then return this. Remember, now it's going to return a void pointer. It is not a character or an integer because the problem here is that whenever an underflow to be signified, to be notified to my main function, I'll use a character pointer. Whenever I want to send a correct object being popped from the stack, it is an integer pointer. Okay, but that's the reason I have declared as a void pointer because whenever we declare a variable in C as a void pointer, it is nothing but a generic pointer. It is not attached to any data type. Here, for underflow, I'm using character pointer. For uh, uh, you know other items like integer items, I'm using an integer pointer. So there will not be any problem for me in storing positive or negative values in my stack. So this is one way by which we could have this. So we are again assuming here that the stack will always hold integer either positive or negative value. Okay, this is the main function. Uh, how it is, you can see here it is now casted to appropriately depending upon whether it is uh, a character pointer you can see here or an integer point. So this is the syntax to be used in order to understand because remember PA returns a void pointer. You can see here it's a void pointer because you can see the returning data type is void. So you cannot print as it is. So you have to convert it or cast it. Uh, type casting has to be done in order to get back your actual data type. So for underflow, I use character pointer. For otherwise, I'll use an integer pointer. So you need an if then else statement. So it's a very simple design, uh, which is my own design, uh, in order to make sure that, in order to satisfy people who argue on the previous design. Okay, so this is about uh, the way in which we can. <coughs> store, I mean, push an element in a stack uh, by storing it in a fixed array because now we have to flag an error saying that is an overflow, flag an error saying there's an underflow kind of thing. Now people will argue okay, that supposing if I declare say 50 elements for my stack and unfortunately my application requires more than 50 locations. So my stack size will get exploded because I don't have space, right? So 50, beyond 50, if I go, what will happen? My program will not work. My algorithm will not work. So no, no, I, I, I don't want to declare as 100 or 200 or 1 million because I may use just 50 or 100. So space is wasted. So this is the problem. So what we can do is we can just go for dynamic arrays where as and when I require extra locations, I can actually allocate. So I can I can use reallocation. So we have malloc, realloc, calloc, you know, all these functions in C. So programming point of view, it becomes so easy that dynamically I can get space in order to make sure that I have enough space in stack. So this overflow case will never occur here because I can keep on getting my space dynamically. OK, in case of static, the stack size is fixed and it cannot be changed at runtime. So if I declare an array in C as 50, I cannot change it at runtime. OK, so once the stack is full, it's an overflow. That's it. But Dynamic array implementation, when the overflow occurs, it's possible to increase the memory dynamically. That means if no space is available, increase it or get more space using uh, malloc, realloc, calloc, you know, all that. So linked list is one where it's purely dynamic. We will, no, no need for all this. Uh, the design is totally different. As I said already, you will study that later. Okay, so how do we push it? 
So I'm just showing only the changed ones uh, here. So the design is that uh, the, the change in the design happens only in that if if top equals n minus one, that's the statement we have. So that is max minus one otherwise. What what does it mean? The stack is full. You can't add. But here it's not like that. In dynamic arrays, what happens when stack pointer is n minus one get memory? That's what we get. So I'm going to use here as an object. So this, you know, stack pointer, I mean stack, sorry, stack content is nothing but an object. So it's purely dynamic. So I'm just using pointers here. So S is a variable which points to your, uh, what do you call a structure? So element is, a I'll show you that uh, after finishing these lines. So element is a simple structure. Uh, which we assume that currently it holds just one integer variable. Now you can add any number of members into this structure. So it's not a simple int, but it is a structure, right? So if top equals capacity minus one. So as usual, top is initialized to minus one. And let us assume capacity, this is the size of the stack, is initialized to one. So it's not like earlier case maximum, like n, like 10 or 50 like that. So what we do is every time when you run out of space, right, when, when you get this condition true, then we are going to request for more space. So that's handled by another function called a stackful function, right? So what does it do? It will increase the space for me. That means get memory for me so that I can push elements. So I'm not going to wind up this by displaying some error. Okay. Otherwise, that means else. You can see here else means automatically it comes to this. I can increment top and then push this element. So this element to be pushed because it's a structure. So the member name of the member is key. So I'm going to show you now what is the yeah, so this is my structure definition for element. So this is my element. So this is what I said. So this contains one member, only one member key, but you can add any more fields here. You can access your member, like student uh, object or a structure. So I can put this in the stack. I can stack so many students, so many employees. So I can put in more, uh, you know, members here in this structure definition. Currently, I have only one member here called key. So here it is not overflow condition or error, but I'm going to request for more memory. Now, how do I do it? The next slide will show you how to enhance or increment or increase the stack space. So what I'm going to do is capacity. We know that it starts from one. I'll double it. Next time, okay. Next time, the, see capacity is a global variable. Top is a global variable. That you can also you can send it here, but assume that top and capacity are global variable. So what happens when I enhance or increase the size of the capacity to double? Next time it will be doubled again when this condition occurs. That's what I'm going to do it. The, so you can see here stackful is the function where yes is done and using realloc. What is realloc? Realloc is a function which dynamically increases the existing memory because I may have some elements or objects already stored in my stack. I should not disturb them. So I just, you know, if, if this is the space already my stack contained, I'll just reallocate I mean, get more memory. So this is already there. This is the new one. So realloc actually does the job of increasing. How? Using realloc. Yes, you have to give the original one, the pointer. Then the second parameter for this is doubling. So supposing if capacity started with one, so you can see here doubled. 
double with the size of the element because I, I don't know what is the size, so I can calculate using the size of operator in C. I can get the size. So next time what happens? So this two into one, let's assume that this is two bytes. Assuming only integer. So what I have four. So now <coughs> capacity you can see here it was one. Now capacity will become two. So next time when you come here two into two into two, so you will get that much. That means doubling. Now capacity two into two, it has become four. Now again four into two eight. So every time you can see that the size of the capacity, that means it will keep on doubling so that I can push, keep on pushing my new elements if that condition occurs. That means you have exhausted the memory. Top is pointing to the space. That means that I'm running out of space. So request for more, double it and again try to push it, etc. etc. When top is equal to capacity minus one. So what happens is stack keeps growing dynamically as and when the element into the stack. So that's exactly what we call it as dynamic arrays usage in the uh, stack implementation without worrying about stack full. Again, for those uh, who are smart students, smart listeners, I have given you two slides. This is the first slide, how MLAC and RealAC works. This slide, I want you to go through this and try to understand. I'm not going to explain this because it's not for beginners. It's only for people who have <coughs> done some work in the pointers and then RealAC, MLAC, you know, all that. Probably they can uh, run this or try to understand this. And in case if there are doubts, you can mail me. So there's no problem. So I'll stop here and continue in my next session about uh, stack. Thank you. Thank you for watching.